He claimed it was love, but his protectiveness turned into obsession. With cameras hidden around the house and demands to wear a tracker, I realized I had just two weeks to escape before his return. I, 29F, have been married to my husband, 30M, who I'll call Alex Alex and I met in college during our freshman year. We started off as just friends and got married seven months ago. I've gotten along with his family, but we aren't super close, but we're friendly enough. The problem is that Alex has begun to make me incredibly uncomfortable. Firstly, he's begun to ask me who I'm meeting with, where, what we plan on doing, how long every single time I leave the house without him. At first, I just thought he was being protective and a good partner just in case something happened. But then he started checking my phone after the visits, vetting and researching each of my friends as well. He also has been pursuing me to link my bank account to his, as he's in charge of the finances when he was perfectly fine with keeping them separate before. We fight about it almost every day. Finally yesterday, when he was preparing to go on a work trip for two weeks in California, he demanded I wear a tracker so he could keep an eye on me while he's gone. I can't do this anymore. I feel like I'm suffocating and his family who I've spoken to about his worrying behavior just said he's being careful and protective as a good husband should. I need to gather my things together and find a way to be gone before he gets home without tipping him off. He's always threatened that. If he ever found me cheating on him, he'd divorce papers the same day. He keeps a filled out copy on his desk. I'm going to submit those the day I leave, but there's so much to do. Bergen finding a new place to live, seeing if my job has any transfers available, packing and moving in two weeks. His return flight is on May 11th, so I need to move quickly. I'm posting here because I don't have any close family, and I can't risk dragging my friends into this as we share the same friends. I just needed a place to vent and ask if anyone has any advice on the easiest and safest way to do this. Edit. Oh my god, you guys are amazing. I never even thought to not use his divorce papers. I'll check for cameras before I start any packing or prepping. I may also shred his divorce papers just in case and look into getting a lawyer for myself. I'm in a no-fault divorce state. That much I remember which will help. I'll update again when I know more. The tracker he wants me to use is a small clip to on the belt or waistband. I'll wear it unless I'm going or doing something related to me leaving. No pets yet, thankfully. Update one. So I've gotten a lot of support and helpful advice along with questions I thought I should clarify before I proceed with the update. Some asked why I'd be hiding things from Alex regarding going out and who I'm meeting with. I don't and I have nothing to hide. However, when he begins to double check everything I tell him with the other people there right down to each person I talked to and what I said. Did I send any text messages? Did I order food? How much did I eat? That's when it started to feel like I was slowly being pushed into a corner. It didn't start that bad, but gradually grew worse over time. All of the Reddit subs my in-laws families are part of are related gardening and DIY, so I highly doubt they'll see this. If so, by the time they do, I'll hopefully be gone. I talked about my job and explained things to my manager, and they promised to look into openings in other states to see if they could get me into one. They'll have an update on that in three days. I trust that my bank account is secured, considering he's tried to get into it before and failed. I found one camera in the kitchen, another in the living room, and one in our bedroom. As such, I've left them in place for now and done all other planning, either in the bathroom pretending I'm taking a bath. I'm honestly staying away from the domestic violence services as my sister-in-law is unfortunately higher up in those considering she volunteers there and, I have a feeling if I did show up there, they would know in a heartbeat. I can't look for apartments until I get the update from my work, but either or I'm still going to be leaving the state. The day before I do, I will be changing my number carrier and wiping my laptop and all of his electronics before I do. I've met with two lawyers so far and had them look over the paperwork. My husband had prepared and both said that it did have some clauses in it that could have caused me some trouble down the line. What alarmed all of us was the fact that several of those clauses dealt with future children and not as a hypothetical. Like several hair suggested I have a feeling he fully intended on getting me pregnant to keep me trapped and tied to him. There are three other locations. My job could send me to and I have. As a precaution, I began looking into all three cities and housing in the areas. Just in case one of those, this is the one they send me to. Even if they don't have an opening that they can push me into then, I will just have to quit, move and figure things out on my own. I have enough money to live and survive for a few months until I can pick up another job. Unfortunately, all of our friends are mutuals and would likely be unaware of the consequences of saying or sharing anything I do or say with my husband. I don't have any surviving close family and obviously my in-laws are not a good resource to rely on. I am on my own unfortunately, other than the wonderful bonds I've begun to make here. I will update again if I get more information or something else happens. Otherwise, all updates when my work gets back to me. I do plan on leaving before he returns though. 
just to make sure that I'm not anywhere near here at that time. My work has an opening I qualify for that will not only shift me across the country, but also comes with a salary increase as well. I've started telling my in-laws and friends that I'm planning a surprise outing for when my husband gets back for just the two of us. This way, people don't give me odd looks if they see me out and about. I've even gone as far as asking Mill to show me his favorite recipes. Meanwhile, I've found a moving company that while small is willing to work in a storm, the reason is in five days we're supposed to get hit with a large storm front. I plan to shut off the breaker and say we lost power if he asks just as several people here suggested and even send him a short clip of the storm. I will have all of my stuff moved that afternoon and I will be flying out once the weather has cleared enough to do so. I have a lawyer who will push my divorce through and I filled out the necessary paperwork so that I don't have to be here for it. I'm not suing for assets or alimony and I've shredded his divorce papers as well. I've set up a cheap phone plan through Cricket until this is all said and done at which point I will find a new carrier number and phone. This one is being wiped and left behind. My laptop is provided by my work and the IT department inspected it thoroughly and it was clean thankfully. No other electronics aside from my laptop and new phone will be coming with me. If Alex needs to talk to me, he can do it through my lawyer. Not sure if anything else will happen, my fingers are crossed that he doesn't think anything's amiss until after I leave and I'm not turning the breaker back on when I do. He can when he gets home. My work is covering the plane ticket, so that at least is one expense I don't have to find a goal in. Update 3. It's been a busy week, but I've gotten so much done. Firstly, I am now out of the house and am currently in a hotel while I look for an apartment. It's a big city, bustling with people no matter where you look. We had a pretty bad storm system hit back home that actually lasted two days. High winds, thunder, lightning, and even hail everywhere. I didn't take much from the house, my documents, clothes, and important sentimental items. I left all of the furniture and electronics behind. I cleaned the house top to bottom and took pictures on my phone so he couldn't claim I damaged anything when I left. My lawyer has already started divorce proceedings and my husband will be served on the 8th. His plane is due to land early in the morning and the sheriff will be there at the house waiting for him. He is very much about public appearances and reputation. My lawyer will be calling him as well to inform him that I am more than willing to air out everything to the public about his actions if it means securing my freedom from him. I will go to court as long as I must to get this pushed through. I haven't told our friends or his in-laws yet. I will do that while he is on the flight to prevent him from getting wind of it before he's handed the divorce papers. I will be calling around and explaining why we're getting divorced to try and prevent him from twisting this into somehow being my fault. I don't want him trying to claim I had an affair or something, so I want to get the truth out before he can twist this. I'm doing okay. I'm tired, but yet I feel almost jittery and off kilter. I keep looking over my shoulder and monitoring what I say even when I don't really need to anymore. Hopefully that will fade soon. My work is covering the cost of the hotel and I'm working on getting my other things in order. I also need to find a new GP as I want to get a full test just to make sure everything is okay. I don't know when my next update will be, probably when the divorce papers are filed or if we have to go to court to push them through. I will try to keep my head up, but it feels like I'm in a whirlwind or something with so many things to do and think about. I kind of thought it would be easier once I got out of the house, but while the fear is smaller, somehow the number of tasks only seems to have grown. Update 4. Firstly, I'm working on getting an apartment still and have applications in at three different places and will hopefully hear back from them soon. I'm still going into work here at the new location so I don't have to worry about burning through my emergency savings completely. I've gotten a lot of emails from Alex, his family, and our old friend group asking question after question. I have only sent one return email to Alex explaining that I don't believe we are truly compatible and it is best we separate now. That his treatment of me when I'd done nothing to deserve as such was just as much of a deal breaker as cheating was for him. I ended the email with the statement that I would not be contacting him further and anything else he needed to pass on to me or vice versa would be done through my lawyer. For his family and friends, I just typed up one email outlining everything that had happened and why I left. I told them I wished them no ill will, but that such treatment of his wife and partner was not acceptable. That should Alex get remarried in the future, I wish they would help support both partners and not just Alex. Alex, from what my lawyer told me, was livid when he was served. The sheriff actually ended up booking him for assault on an officer and menacing due to the threats he was shouting. His father bailed him out in a few hours, but with the testimony of the sheriff, my lawyer believes I have a very good chance at getting a restraining order. Alex, upon returning to the house, apparently lost his temper again, breaking the dining table into pieces as well as the TV and putting several holes in the walls. 
At least that's what one of the emails from one of our friends reported as Alex called him to help him clean up the mess. My lawyer already has pictures of the house I took with timestamps as evidence nothing had been damaged by me. My friend reported that Alex tried to claim I'd been the one to trash the house but the holes in the wall were at head height. Alex is 6'3", and I'm 5'4", so he knew that was false. Either way, taking the pictures definitely will help me so again. Thank you everyone here for the advice because I never would have thought of that on my own. My work won't share details of where I am as I do work with some higher end clientele who value security and that information won't be gossiped about and no. I'm not some stripper or escort. I deal with contracts, notary and business management. As such, even if Alex tried to use my work to find me, he wouldn't succeed. Update 5. It's been a little bit and I thought I'd answer some questions before giving my update. It may be a while after this until things change. Firstly, no I didn't bring my car. The public transport here is good enough to use without needing one. I have secured an apartment and the building has good security. You need a key card to enter and there is a security guard at a desk right by the entrance to the building. As part of my contract, I gave them a photo of Alex and his family so that even in the off chance they do find me, they won't be let in. The responses I got from the emails varied. His family said I was overreacting and that I owe Alex an apology for the problems this has caused him. The pending criminal charges puts him at risk of losing his job if he's convicted. Alex sent a long email, apologizing and pleading for me to come home. He said he was worried for me that he is willing to go to therapy if it will appease me. He wants us to remain together, and he didn't think leaving was an appropriate response to his genuine concern and worry for my health and safety. The friends gave somewhat lacking replies, saying that they didn't think Alex was ever going to hurt me, and that I shouldn't be letting my imagination run away wild. As much as I want to say I was surprised by the lack of support, I'm honestly not. He intends to fight the divorce. I am letting my lawyer handle it, and I am also pursuing a protective order as well. Once I got approved for my apartment, I also froze my credit. I've changed my phone carrier and number, as well as making sure none of my documents list Alex as next of kin or Poe. Some have asked why I was so paranoid about Alex and his possible future actions. The answer for that actually is somewhat simple, my grandmother. I love that woman to bits. As a teen, she explained why my grandfather was never around. He was extremely abusive and manipulative, and her generation didn't allow divorce really. She wouldn't have been able to buy a house or get a good enough job to support her and my mother on her own. As such, she endured it, shielded my mom as she could until my grandfather died. When I felt like I may have been overreacting, I remembered how she'd said she'd always wished she'd been able to see grandfather for what he was early on when she may have been able to annul the ball. I don't know when I'll update again, Maybe when the divorce goes through or if something big happens, but until then, I'm just trying to keep my head above the water. Update 6. It's been a month since my previous update, and I wanted to share some of what's been going on in the meantime. The divorce is proceeding, but even though I don't need him to agree, and he's not, it means I have to go through the courts to get it approved. As such, it could be upwards of six months to push it through even though I'm filing without attempting to claim property, alimony, or compensation. I just want a clean break and separation. Alex has attempted to use our friends to reach out to me as he doesn't want to use my lawyer for communication. He's saying it's disrespectful and cowardly to hide behind my lawyer and not meet him face to face. Alex wrote me a letter that he did pass off to my lawyer, but the contents were him justifying his actions and claiming that in today's time it is dangerous for women to be on their own, which is why he was so intent on trying to keep me safe from harm. He wanted me to understand that he was trying to protect me as best he could and was hurt that I would just lie to him and hide my actions from him related to my dissatisfaction with our marriage and my moving. I didn't reply because at no point did he apologize. All he did was turn everything around on me as I was being overly dramatic, emotional, and cowardly. There was a second letter with Alex's from my cell. Her letter was honestly disturbing and completely justified my misgivings regarding approaching her in any kind of professional capacity. She spent five paragraphs detailing how a real abusive relationship looked like and that Alex was the furthest thing from abusive. The details she included were all related to financial abuse and physical abuse, nothing like what Alex had been doing. She stated that my attempts to smear her brother's name for attention and clout made me the abuser, not him. I haven't really been able to process that admittedly. Part of me can't help but wonder if she's right. I mean, I blindsided him by leaving as I did and am refusing to speak with him at all. My old boss recommended that I look into getting into therapy after I moved, and I think I need to. I've had a hard time adjusting to being on my own. I keep censoring myself and haven't even gone out to eat yet. I always end up worrying about what if someone sees me, what if I get in trouble for spending my money on something for my lawyer is continuing to fight for the divorce, 
and I shouldn't need to be physically present in court. Any meetings needed between me and the judge can be done via Zoom. I'm trying to avoid confrontation with Alex and his family for now as much as I can and pass both letters to my lawyer in case he needs them. Our friends are mostly trying to avoid taking sides still, and I'm honestly approaching the point of just letting them go as well. I'm tired of fighting for them to understand at this point. I don't know if anything is going to happen, so my next update may not be until around mid-November depending on how long it takes to push the divorce through. Work is going well and it's helpful to have something familiar to anchor my day-to-day -day life when so much has changed and is changing even now. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.